Welcome back everyone. If you're new here, my name is Brian Jenks, and today I'm going to show you some of my favorite tools, partly for the neurodivergent, but also that are just really handy and awesome to use. Uh, I'm currently dealing with a lot of burnout and crippling uh, financial anxiety because of my inability to continue to upload videos on a timely manner to this channel. But uh, here are some of the, of the tools that I use myself that I would find useful and that I hope you find useful, and maybe they might provide value to you and help you work through some of your anxiety. Because boy, is it fun having it. Best ways to support the channel are, if you're going to do it on an ongoing basis, GitHub sponsors because they take no fees, followed by Patreon. If you're gonna do like a one-time thing, buy me a coffee, PayPal, or just fine. And if you just wanna support me without any money involved, the best thing you can do is like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and that's it. First things first, uh, we're going to look at five different tools today, and these are what they are, just so you can get it out of the way in case you want to just jump straight to the links. Um, can't really make it much bigger than that. So first things first, half bold. What is half bold? So ADHD people, people with uh, abilities that are that make it hard to read long form text or just reading text in general, when you read this is the TLDR. When you read, your eyes literally bounce onto the words. And as comical as it might be when you're ADHD or when you have a difficulty with attention regulation, when your eyes are bouncing on the words, sometimes they can go wee and you lose your place, which is why, you know, when you're ADHD or whatever, you can sometimes get caught having to reread the same paragraph like five times or your mind's wandering and you just can't focus on the text. Uh, if you're a speed reader or you do speed reading strategies, one of the things you can do is take like a stylus and drag it across the words and track the stylus, but then actually reading the words underneath the stylus. And it's one of the training things you can do for speed reading. But Half Bold is a particular service that is uh, really handy because what you can do is you can paste text into here. And this is also a Chrome extension and it's it's in place all over the place. You, Many people have probably seen this when it got really popular and blew up initially, where it was called like bionic reading or something. So uh, what you can do is you can paste in a bunch of like random text. Whoops. Let's post in some random text. And you know, there's, there's some sample stuff and I can click go and then it actually does this. It highlights a particular amount of the beginning of words so that it's actually easier to anchor your gaze to the particular words and read it. And if you don't believe me, read this. If you have difficulty reading, try reading this and see how fast and how much you're actually able to retain when you read this text. And I think there's actually a uh, research paper out on this. Don't quote me on that. Um, but this is a very useful form of reading, especially when you're really struggling with it. You could copy um, a bunch of text from like a school textbook, if it's like an e-textbook, and uh, do this. And if you use like Text Sniper, I'll put an affiliate link below. I mean, I've been affiliate for them forever because I love the tool. But um, I have um, a Text Sniper where if I actually turn it on using some of my like mouse hotkey stuff, I can actually select text and it reads it to me. And that actually has also helped me with uh, reading and studying by having the auditory component as well as the actual words I'm reading. So this is halfbold.com this might also be very helpful for you. Now, the next one is something that just as an adult, just trying to schedule time with a group of people when everyone has different jobs, different work schedules, priorities, kids, it just it's a bloody nightmare. Just getting time together with a, even a decent or even a small group of friends, right? So one of the things that is really helpful with this is software around getting a consensus for scheduling. Now, I don't really have a lot of familiar with this tool, familiarity with this tool because I've only used it a couple times, but when I did use it with my friend group, it was incredibly easy to get consensus on when the heck we should meet. So what's this service called? It is called Arranger. Now, Arranger is really handy because it, well, I honestly didn't get too much into the functionality of this because I just needed it to do a very quick thing and boy was it easy for the first time person jumping into it, just figuring it out and making it work. Super easy. I only have one event in here when my friends and I um, actually used it. So it's just under the expired ones because I mean it was back in February. But like you send a list of times and people will actually vote for like, you know, the dates 
and you can even make this on different times and you can see who and when everyone's available and then see the maximum number of slots where everyone's available and then pick the best results. And this is just amazing because it really just takes all the hard work out of having to schedule when the heck should we all meet? Because it's already hard enough just being an adult, especially in the US. Uh, so this just really takes a lot of the edge off when it's just trying to get some friends together and enjoy time with people. Now this next one I actually found out uh, on TikTok because, you know, I lurk TikTok something fierce because there is so much great stuff on there. But when I saw what this particular service could do, I literally lost my mind. Like this is absolutely insane and one of the most helpful and free resources for the neurodivergent. If you're not using these, you probably should and they will probably provide massive benefit to you. And what I'm talking about is Goblin Tools. I know, weird. But looking at Goblin Tools, I'm gonna go a little bit of out of order on their site, but they got several different tools. So Compiler, compile my brain dump into a list of tasks. I'm just listing off random blah, blah, blah. Here's all the stuff I need to get done. I can turn it into tasks and it's gonna process all those things and then give me a bullet list. Great, but now I can also send this, this list to an additional tool that Goblin Tools has called Magic To Do. Send results to the Magic To Do. Sent, go see. Now it's all here. Now from what I am understanding based on playing around with this a little bit is that this is all stored in the browser cache. So it's not on their database, I don't think. It's not on uh, anything that, I would be careful about keeping this as like a source of truth long term, excuse me, long term but you can download and upload these lists to somewhere or even export to iCal or, weirdly enough, or, or Todoist. So you can export this to Todoist, um, but this is actually incredibly helpful. And we'll return back to this for one other thing, but now I can actually use this to keep track of my tasks. And I can even uh, add estimates, I can add subtasks if I need to. Um, actually, what is breakdown items? So this is gonna actually break down into even smaller components. That might be too much for some people with executive dysfunction where they might have too much information overload, but this is incredible. And this would have been so helpful for me early on, but we'll come back to this because there's an important thing I wanna say about that. The next one is judge. So the judge can actually take, say you got a terse email from your boss or something, you can copy that in here and actually have it explain to you whether, you know, am I misreading the tone of this thing? And this would have been really helpful. I mean, granted, I probably bother my fiance to no end by having her do that kind of stuff for me, but this is incredibly useful and valuable because how many times do we just suddenly get crippling RSD backlash because we're worried about, did we upset somebody? Are we on bad terms? And it's all, it's really just that, oh, they just are of an older generation and they use an ellipsis all over the place or they don't use emojis or they don't understand how to communicate in a more uh, friendly and warm tone through a text-based medium. This is incredibly helpful for presenting additional, you know, spoons, if people say, or coins, as I say, expenditure of all this mental taxing energy by just not getting a triggered RSD response to somebody's terse email. Uh, the next one is estimator. You can say, how long is something gonna take me to do? And I can just plop something in here. I probably wouldn't rely on this one too much, but hey, it might work for you. Um, and then this one's really cool, chef. What am I having for lunch? Because I just have a list of ingredients and I don't know what to cook and I hate anything to do with food besides just eating it. So I can type in a list of stuff, hit you know the, um, whatever that thing said, but scan this list of ingredients and it will actually prepare a full on recipe for you which I've seen services like this one before, but this is just cool. It's all in one place and it's all free. Here's all the directions, all the stuff. And what are we having? Teriyaki glazed salmon with garlic shiitake rice. What? So this is really, really awesome. And hey, send results to Magic To Do. So all of their tools interoperate together, which is just incredible. Um, and then also there is Formalizer. So we can just type how we randomly type. And I found this, <laughs> So I t I'll type emails, like in my, my day job, professional emails, and my fiance will look at them and be like, you're really going to send that? Because I don't see anything wrong with how I communicate, but then it's like, no, this is really like blunt and straight to the point and almost 
rude or these people will perceive it as rude and I'm like what so what this does is this takes text and you can actually have it change the tone so like let's say if you have any questions please let me know period like I would read that as terse and I would be like okay I mean I don't think you're upset with me but I'd be like okay this person is really like if you have any questions let me know like that's how I interpret terse text I rely a lot on emojis and uh, punctuation so like this one, you can make it more informal. Okay, so let's convert that. If you have any questions, just give me a shout. Okay, um, let's say uh, more sociable. And what is it gonna say? Hi there, if you happen to have any questions at all, please feel free to let me know. I'd be more than happy to help you out, exclamation point. Wow, wow. Okay, and then the last one, or not the last one, but one that ties in with Magic To Do here that I really like is something else I saw on, you know, again, TikTok, which was this uh, Wheel of Names. It's like some random Google tool, but it's something you might use in a classroom where, you know, you're going to do a drawing and you have a list of all of your, like, students or somebody in a class or whatever. But for the neurodivergent who have trouble just picking a task and starting it, and if all tasks are of equal priority and you really just need to get something done and have some external force tell you, just do it, this is a great way of doing it. So we've actually just brain dumped what we need to get done into Goblin Tools. We've sent it to Magic To Do. What we're going to do now is export it to Copy to Clipboard, and then we can paste it over here into the wheel. And uh, some of these were extra stuff from Wash the Dishes, which I'm going to remove that just for clarity. Uh, let's do that just for clarity. And so now we have, you know, five of our tasks here, and we can actually just spin the wheel. Click to spin. Okay. And so which task am I going to start with first? What am I going to do first? And I'm letting it tell me we're going to balance the finances first. Great. And you can have this set so that you can actually have it remove the item afterwards so you can spin randomly, pick a task, get it done, and remove it from the wheel, and spin until you're done. Another great way of just getting yourself to be productive by relying on some of these external forces and tools. A really valuable and great approach, I think. Okay, last one. So the last one I have for you today is something that is called tinywow.com. Now, tinywow is really awesome because it really just provides you with a bunch of small tools to just do common tasks that we all are just like, oh my god, how do I need, how do I do this again? I just some small little thing, just, I just need to get this done. And like some of my favorite ones are just like merge PDF, merge two or more PDFs into a single PDF file, or convert an image to a PDF. Like you don't have to code something out or pay for a specific tool or it's all right here. And these are a bunch of small, free, simple tools to deal with video, writing, images, PDFs, file manipulation, XML to JSON, like whatever. There's a lot of ways to do things, but if you just want a very simple point and click interface to just get something done, here I can convert an image to a PDF file. I can just drag multiple PDFs and merge them all into one. This is one of my go-to things for just quickly getting something done with a point and click interface. And it's just productivity, like just bam, out of the way. And I don't have to like flail around and figure out how to get the solution done. It's just simple tools and it helps me continue moving in the flow and tackling the next task. So I hope you found those tools useful. If you've used them before, have heard of them before, please let me know. I'd love to hear your opinions in the comments. If you have other suggestions of really useful tools that you've found and use, please provide those in the comments. I'd love to hear about them. And I'll catch y'all in the next one.